On the last episode of Dragon Ball Z, Son Goku, after spending a year in the weight room getting busy, heads back to Earth only to find a majority of his friends up in smoke thanks to the like of Boss Rutan and a strange man with a forehead rivaling those from Cartoon Network's Code Lyoko series. Feeling an anger he hasn't in a long time, young Goku made short work of the brute Nappa, clapping his cheeks and leaving him paralyzed waist down like Professor X. Vegeta, thinking about how garbage the freeze of forces insurance is, decides to put Nap out of his mercy, killing his lifelong friend like he just met the man last Tuesday. Now, with nothing left to come between them, Son Goku and Prince Vegeta prepare for the fight of their lives, not realizing that this clash will make a turning point that will alter the course of both their lives forever. <sighs> Here we go, homies, the moment a lot of us have been waiting for. Let's talk about the legendary clash between the homie Goku and the one and only Prince Vegeta. Before we even start talking about the hands being thrown, let's give some massive credit to Toriyama and the rest of the team in regards to the care they took in setting the scene up. The battle between Goku and Vegeta is a battle of philosophy. Vegeta represents the elite. The man is saying royalty, raised from birth to feel as though he was better than others, and to be real, he had the talent to back it up. Man represents God-given, inborn talent and the belief that in this world, some folks are simply born better than others. Then we have Son Goku, the loser riffraff kicked off Planet Vegeta to colonize some random weak planet because that's the most they could expect out of the potential he was born with. But here's the thing, the Saiyans never accounted for how the work one puts in and the friends they make can turn someone with perhaps little potential at birth into a beast beyond compare through the correct training and discipline. The homie Goku represents the idea that the low can become the high through the proper means and effort and that one set limits can be broken with the proper motivation. And this belief can even be seen through how they set up the scene, with Vegeta occupying the space at the top, looking down on Goku, the low-born peasant, smugly thinking that no matter how hard this weakling tries, the gap between them is just too large. Y'all can't tell me that early DBZ is not goaded, bro. I love this damn series. Now let's let the hands begin. Goku makes the first move and charges directly towards Vegeta, and from jump, both of these fellows are throwing like crazy. A little moment that I really like is when Goku misses one of his attacks, Vegeta comes in with a hook trying to knock Goku his head off, but instead, Mans is ready and grabs Vegeta's hand, stopping the punch. It happens quick, but Vegeta gives a quick glance over to Goku in the middle of the fight like, oh, you think you nice, huh? And then they get back to work. What was cracking me up was how aggressive Goku is in this fight. Man was on Vegeta like white on rice. Vegeta would try backing up to gain some space, and Goku was right there with him. Like, nah, buddy, we about to throw these right now. The beginning is back and forth, boy. I gotta give them both credit. They were piecing each other up. Both Goku and Vegeta were catching hands to the chest, knees, nothing was off the table. They were straight trying to put each other to sleep. Vegeta catches Goku lacking though, knees man in the gut and has him reeling, then catches a double axe handle to the back of the dome on some WWE work. Once Goku lands, he sees the prince looking down on him with the smuggest look you've ever seen in your life. Straight evil in his heart, looking right in the man's eyes like, yeah pal, I'm that guy. Even Goku had to admit that, okay yeah, this fella's kind of nice. But I gotta show him I ain't no punk though, so while he had Vegeta's attention, Goku decided decides to get serious and activate his Kaioken technique. I about died when this happened because while Vegeta's watching, he notices something different about old boy and raises an eyebrow. Before he can even question things further though, Goku is already headed in his direction and connects with a right hook that would have made Mike Tyson flinch. Vegeta's brain starts buffering after this hit and Buddy leaves his chest wide open and Goku just starts piecing him up like crazy. But before Goku can get another good hit in, Vegeta hits a substitution jutsu and kicks Goku in the jaw letting him know alright that's enough. Goku once again starts Starts talking that shonen protagonist stuff saying, yeah, fighting a guy this strong has really got me fired up. Vegeta looks over and is like, oh yeah, you fired up? Well, you're gonna really like this and begins key charging himself. But Goku learns real quick that this man is different because when Vegeta starts key charging, the whole color of the sky changes. Lightning starts emerging. You would have thought Shinron just came out the cut to watch the fight the way things were looking. But nah, it was just Vegeta cooking up something devious. Goku has to put up his guard all the way just so he can survive the man's key charge. But before Buddy can even really register what's happening. All he sees is Vegeta's massive forehead on a beeline in his position, ready to run him through like Dollar Store 2 ply. Vegeta's on the attack now, and dude means business. He starts knocking Goku all around the wasteland like his light work, and then out of nowhere, starts throwing literal fireballs at Goku like homie just ate a fire flower and Mario. Bro, this had me flabbergasted if I'm keeping it a bean. And Goku was too, because he almost got smoked by it, but instead it was just his shirt that ended up catching the fade. After that close call, Goku starts to realize. 
realized that if I don't figure something out quick, this man is really going to turn me into atomic particles. So he decides that it's about time to bust out everything in his bag of tricks. Homie's muscles start going crazy like he's Bruce Banner, stressing his body to the limit, pause, while activating the Kaioken times three. King Kai is watching the whole thing on Zoom and is mad stressed watching Goku put his body past the limit, activating the Kaioken at that level. But Goku knows that Vegeta is here to box, and unless he pulls out everything in his bag of tricks, he's going to be making that long run back to Snake Way for a permanent training session with King Kai. Quick note, one thing I really like about the Kaioken technique is that at this point in the series, Toriyama makes really clear the stress this move is putting on Goku's body. It isn't just something they can pull out like a get out of jail free card when he's getting body. When dude uses it, it's coming at a cost and it's time limited. It makes the technique feel fair and have a sense of consequence connected to it that's desperately missing later in the series. After Goku finishes charging, he mounts an attack that almost makes Vegeta a permanent part of a nearby mountain. Vegeta is beyond heated that this lowborn monkey dared to put his dirty ass Tims on his back and lets out a primal shout of pure anger and frustration. Goku ain't done yet though. He catches Vegeta asleep at the wheel, weaves a punch, and hits him with arguably a worse gut shot than he caught Nappa with. I gotta tell y'all, the way this had Vegeta reel on back hole in his little tummy, it was absolutely tragic. I bet you even Goku felt bad for that one. Was probably thinking to himself, damn, I ain't really have to do him like that. Vegeta better be lucky that he had that armor on, boy, because if that was pure skin, the homie would have been walking around with a donut in his chest looking like Raditz out here. I know Nappa was in hell cackling watching Vegeta take that shot too. Never seen a man looking like that. Vegeta did his best to come back with something because he knew how weak he was starting to look, but Goku starts punking dude even harder. The man grabs one of Vegeta's fist in midair, stops him, and just starts squeezing them johns like your older brother used to to remind you that you're really not that guy. And bro, when I tell you that Goku was squeezing, you can see the veins popping out of Buddy's arms in the side of his noggin. He was trying to turn Vegeta's fist into oatmeal. Vegeta starts wailing out in pain, but then he pulls his crazy ass MMA move, hops on Goku's midsection paws, and hits him with another double axe handle. Goku wasn't feeling that though, and his Vegeta won one of the most brutal combinations in recent memory. No exaggeration, y'all, I could literally feel the hits watching this nonsense. Goku was hitting this man with every ounce of muscle fiber he had available in his body. Then dude picks Vegeta up and gets ready to slam Buddy off a cliff, but he makes sure his knee is lodged right in homie's spine before he hits the ground, and I guarantee y'all that after taking this hit, Vegeta ain't never been the same since for real. It's so crazy. Vegeta tries to stand up, but man is in so much pain he just falls back over. And then he decides, you know what, F it. I'm done. Launches himself in the air and is ready to body the whole planet just to make sure Kakarot has to hold this L. And at this point, we have arguably the most legendary beam struggle in all of DBZ and maybe even anime history. This moment is just beautiful, y'all. These two men up to this point have been given the fight everything they got. They both realize they're hitting their limit, so it's time to finish things in one move. And once again, you have the imagery of Vegeta at the top, the elite warrior shooting down on the low class Goku to finally show him the dominance of the royal class once and for all. But Goku refuses to give in. By pushing his body to the brink of death and activating the Kaioken times four, he gives everything he has, winning the beam struggle and also the moral victory, showing Vegeta that birthright means nothing and that through the right training, even those considered trash can reach the top if the right amount of effort is put in. And what's crazy is that Vegeta survives the beam struggle, right? But after evading being blasted into the sun, the man yells out an absolutely insane scream of pure rage. You would think that homie would be happy that he survived getting blasted into the stratosphere, but it's bigger than that. Vegeta is a man of pride, and in this moment, he just had his pride shattered in an irreparable way. His whole worldview that he lived up to this very moment was completely shattered in an instant by someone he barely saw as a living creature. In a fit of embarrassment, shock, and rage, Vegeta returns to Goku's position and creates an artificial moon to gain the power that he needs to transform and finish Goku off. And while he seems to be happy about what's coming next, as the series continues, Vegeta is quick to reflect on this moment as one of pride and failure. He saw Goku as the victor the moment he won that beam struggle, and everything that occurs after this point is him trying desperately to hold on to what's left of his pride. What happens to Goku post-transformation is absolute clown shoes. Man is out here running for his life in the wasteland. He used up the last of his key in that beam struggle and is in no position to try to take Vegeta down in the state that he's in now. This section of the fight literally feels like a horror movie as we watch our homie Goku run, hide behind rocks and peek behind corners, trying everything he can not to get snapped in half like a Kit Kat if Vegeta finds him. There's no running from this though, as Vegeta discovers Goku time and time again, making him realize trying to run and hide is useless. But something that does happen, which I completely forgot about, is seeing Vegeta like this finally makes Goku realize that he's the one responsible for all those giant monster attacks back in the day that occurred out of nowhere, and that he was the one responsible for his grand 
Grandpa Gohan's death. But the man has no time to grieve because Vegeta is hell bent on getting the last laugh and is ready to chase this man to the ends of the earth. Goku has one more trump card up his sleeve though. Goku hits Vegeta with a solar flare, a technique that I really want to see used more again for real, and begins charging the final technique he learned from King Kai, the spirit bomb. Homie starts gathering his energy and eventually he's ready. Goku puts the key into his fist and is ready to send Vegeta to the next dimension, but Vegeta's too fast and hits Goku with a beam before he can fire it off. Vegeta comes over to Goku's position, takes all 19 tons of his body and starts river dancing on Goku's legs. I'll tell you right now, Buddy's ball career is finished. Had his knees looking like D-Rose. Vegeta's out for blood though and is about to finish the job, but Goku manages to fire off a key blast in the homie's eye and buy himself a little time. Vegeta sees him again though, picks him up and starts squeezing Goku, straight turning his bones in a baby powder. At this point, Krillin and Gohan just can't watch anymore and decide to jump in before Goku gets flatlined. Krillin goes for another Destructo disc thinking that he caught Vegeta lacking, but bro Mario hops in and watches the disc fly away, almost friendly firing Gohan on the way. And right when everything starts to look like it's over for real, who else but the GOAT Yajirobe enters the scene with a buzzer beater, cutting off Vegeta's tail and ending the transformation. The way homie scurries off immediately after cutting the tail kills me. Dude knew it was time to skedaddle because Vegeta was going to be big mad. Immediately upon reverting the transformation, Vegeta starts beating the absolute dog mess out of Gohan. He was doing this child so dirty, bro. Krillin sees this and makes an attempt to help out Gohan, but gets immediately one shot up by a single kick. Look, I know Vegeta is magnitude stronger than Krillin even at this point in the story, but the way Vegeta ended Krillin's career in a single hit and had him hit in the Family Guy death animation got me so mad. Vegeta starts in on Gohan again, and looking back, I cannot believe the absolute demon time Vegeta was on fighting this literal child. Homie picks up little dude by the collar and starts headbutting this child with his massive five head, and once he's done torturing him, he chucks him in the dirt right next to his pops. Goku, with the little energy he has left, begins the process of handing over the spirit bomb to Gohan since his body is so broken at this point, he doesn't have the ability to finish the fight himself. And right before the transfer can occur, Vegeta comes in with a straight WWE knee drop on a Goku's midsection. The worst part is, bro deliberately waited for the moment that would hurt the absolute worst to break things up. He kicks Goku to the side and begins cruelly beating away at Goku's broken body. Seeing all this happening to his pops triggers the Toriyama angry Gohan power boost and he starts charging head first at Vegeta. And I gotta give little Gohan his due here. Little buddy put up a valiant effort against Vegeta. Even with being scared out of his mind and low on energy, he pushes Vegeta enough to have to concentrate his efforts solely on him and take the battle seriously. This distraction allowed time for Krillin to gain consciousness again and head over to Goku who had begun the process of transferring the Genki Dama to Krillin while Gohan was getting busy. Goku completes the transfer and Krillin has a hold of the spirit bomb. While this is happening, Vegeta does his favorite thing in the world and begins shooting an energy blast volley at Gohan in the hopes of toasting him so he can murk the rest of these humans and get off this planet. I just gotta comment on how ass the Vegeta energy blast volley's record is, bro. That ish has worked a grand total of zero times and Buddy still feels the need to waste all that key, knowing full well the dude on the other end is gonna emerge from the cloud of smoke unharmed, looking like the main character and you're gonna be sitting there looking stupid. But Krillin doesn't want to take any more chances on young Gohan getting hurt, so he chucks the ball of Vegeta. And now Krillin's batting 0 and 3 on his ultimate techniques missing the mark as Vegeta jumps the spirit bomb and had him looking crazy. Just as all hope looks lost, who else but young Gohan is sitting on the other side of Vegeta? The young Go outstretches his hands, the spirit bomb bounces off and hits Vegeta right in his back, sending him to the same place Team Rocket goes when they take L's on Pokemon. Exhausted, the Z-Fighters think they finally won as Vegeta slowly comes crashing back down to Earth unconscious. Except psych because this menace wakes up more pissed off than ever and lets off an explosion of wave hoping to smoke everybody in the nearby vicinity. After Vegeta hits his pose unnecessarily for a good three minutes, he surveys the land and notices young Gohan unconscious, but his tail is revealed. Vegeta suddenly remembers the artificial moon and immediately makes a direct line to flatline this kid because he knows what's coming if he doesn't act quick. But before he can strike the decisive blow, Yajirobe comes in and delivers a nasty cut to the Saiyan, even piercing his armor. Honestly, Yajirobe does not get enough credit for his role in this battle. If Mans did not do what he did, the Earth would have been an absolute shambles. In shock that he was damaged by a seemingly worthless human with such a low power level, Vegeta starts fat shaming Yajirobe and delivers a nasty right hook to the face that Loki should have knocked dude's head off. Then while the bro's brain is already looking like scrambled eggs after taking that hook, Vegeta comes over and starts working his ground and pound on Yajirobe, just hitting him with punch after unnecessary punch. This ends up being a fatal mistake though because while Vegeta was pissed off bullying this poor man, Gohan transforms and now it's his turn to go through the horror movie. At this point, all Vegeta can do 
do is run desperately and try to come up with a plan to cut off Donkey Kong's tail before he takes the life out of him. Gohan jumps in the air ready to curb stomp Vegeta, but Vegeta at this point lets out another trash energy blast volley and you guessed it, it doesn't work and Gohan continues towards Vegeta ready to make a snack out of him. Pause. Vegeta in a few hot seconds knows he's about to get absolutely wasted, but all of a sudden dude just activates his Sharingan, remembers his data on Krillin and shoots off a Destructo disc, cutting off Gohan's tail. Vegeta was so happy at this point too, but he finally thought he won, but he didn't realize till too late that he was completely gassed out using that technique and is forced to watch as a slowly transforming Gohan lands ass first on top of him in Uzaru form, finally ending the battle. At this point, Vegeta has nothing left in the tank. Bro calls for an Uber to get him back home because he's had enough of these Earthlings for one day. Krillin sees this though and is like, nah buddy, you came to this planet, ended some of my closest friends, damn near paralyzed me and you really think I'm about to just let you cook so you can do it all over again later? Krillin picks up Yajirobe's sword and is dead set on catching a body. Vegeta looks at him in disbelief, thinking to himself, man, I'm really about to be killed by this random ass bald dude. This has got to be karma for Nappa. Right before he gets dropped though, Goku yells for Krillin, pleading with them not to go through with it. Goku asks Krillin to be the bigger person, reminding him that they got their dub and that it would be better to teach him a lesson about what it means to be merciful than anything that would come from revenge. Krillin looks back at Vegeta with absolute hate in his eyes, but our respect and love for Goku honors the request, allowing Vegeta to escape completely battered but with his life still intact. And that, folks, marks the end of the Saiyan Saga. Going through these videos with everyone has done nothing but remind me of how legendary DBZ is. Not only just the fights, but the storytelling and the themes are massively underrated and deserve more props than they get credit for. Thank you all for rocking with these videos, and I'm excited to hit up the Namek Saga together and get into the menaces that are the Ginyu Force and the legendary Lord Frieza. Be easy, y'all, and I'll talk to you in the next video.